Welcome back to each one, reach one. Let's begin by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamashiach, Yahushai. All praise is due. We're continuing our lesson today in Christianity versus the Bible. Shout out to the elect. I love you, family. We're back for another one. Let's get back to the business of chopping these heads off. We left off in our last video in Jeremiah chapter five. We're gonna pick up today in Jeremiah chapter seven. Subject, message at the temple gates. I'm gonna read the whole chapter. Let's rock. The word that came to Jeremiah, the Israelite from Yahweh saying, stand in the gate of Yahweh's house and proclaim there this word, stand in the gate of Yahweh's house and proclaim there this word and say, hear the word of Yahweh, all ye of Judah, all ye of Judah. So Jeremiah, the Israelite, is speaking on behalf of the Father, the Father speaking through him. To who? All ye of Judah, okay, that enter in at these gates to worship Yahweh. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the power of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, the temple of Yahweh, the temple of Yahweh, the temple of Yahweh are these. For if ye thoroughly amend your ways, I'm going to say it thoroughly, it would have made sense if that was the case, but the word is thoroughly. For if ye thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if ye thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt, then will I cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Behold, ye trust in lying words and cannot profit. Will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense to Baal? and walk after other gods whom you know not, and come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. Is this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith Yahweh, but go ye now unto my place, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it, for the wickedness of my people, Israel. I'm gonna stop there. Look, understand, Gentiles by blood, I always gotta specify, you Christians, you seem to believe that you guys can get out of the, the Lord's wrath. You think that you're gonna get raptured out of here before tribulation and never have to go in through anything hard. Look what the Most High did to his people. Look what he did to his people. Listen to what he did to his people for wickedness. Well, that was them. They were all wicked. You think every last one of them were all wicked? Children and, 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 and everything else, right? Okay, so you, you, you say that, all right? I'm not gonna say you're lying. I'm gonna say this. If that's the case, you got to say the same for you right now as a nation, you, your people, your wicked people, even your children. You all are worthy of judgment. You think he, you, you literally think that he brought righteous judgment on his people for their wickedness, but you, he's going to give you a back door out of out of a uh, tribulation. He's gonna give you a back door out of judgment. You can just call on Jesus and then you're gonna be okay. That's an insane way of thinking. It's absolute craziness. Pure madness, I tell you. Verse 13, let's keep going. Like I said, he's my people. Look what I did to them for their wickedness. 
you guys will not escape. Nobody escapes. And now, because ye have done all these works, saith Yahweh, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but ye heard not, and I called you, but ye answered not. Therefore will I do unto this house. Oh, okay, well, let's, let's stop for a second. How do you think that he was calling unto them and they heard not? He said, I spake unto you. How do you think he did it? Rising up early and speaking. How do you think he did it? The way he's doing it right now, through his prophet. He spoke through his prophets. That was the prophet's job to speak things that were that were to come to foretell the future as told to them by the most high so now as you turn your backs on the real men of the lord and we're crying out he's speaking to you via us we're his mouthpieces but you heard not you hear not right he's calling unto you but you answer not. But you think you're going to be able to call on Jesus. And he's going to get you out of the destruction that he's given his own people time and time again for the same offense. You think you're going to be special. You think you're going to be more special than his beloved chosen. Insane. Therefore, will I do unto this house house people, the seed line, the bloodline, offspring. Therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein you trust, and unto the place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. And I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren. Listen, he's talking to Judah, right? Jews, the southern kingdom, right? Listen to what he said. And I will cast you out of my sight, Judah, as I have cast out all your brethren. What, who are all these brethren he's talking about? If he's talking to Judah, the southern kingdom, there can only be one answer to this. Who's the, who are the brethren of the southern kingdom Israelites? The northern kingdom Israelites. No, man, you're lying. That's just your interpretation. Oh, let us continue reading. Comma, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Bam, context, gotta love it. That's why you don't just stop. That's what your pastors do. They stop before they get to a part that clearly explains what's being talked about so that, you know, that doesn't need to be discussed so that it doesn't hurt your feelings, so that it doesn't, it doesn't leave you feeling excluded. But no, 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 not over here. We read everything in its entirety. We read context clues. We make sure we understand who's speaking, who's being spoken to, what is the context of the information. We, this is very important. When you, are, when you are a studier of the scripture and not a reader of the scripture or a listener of the scripture, as most of you Christians are, you don't, you don't even read the scriptures for yourself. You go to church to hear your, your pastor read one or two verses and spend the rest of the time saying shit that make you feel good. He keeps giving you that feel good talk so that it's like a drug. You keep coming back to get that feel good. You want to keep coming back to get that hit. I need one more hit. I need one more hit. Here's my vein, man. Here's my vein. Hit me. That's what it is. It's tell you, he tells you sweet things. He, he, he feeds you that drug so that you put that money in the collection plate. And then you leave, go home. And when the drug starts to wear off, and by the time it's wearing off, you, know, you can't wait. For the, for the next church service. So you can come back, pay your money, and get that hit of that drug again. Even the whole seed, meaning bloodline, the offspring of Ephraim, Ephraim of the 12 tribes of Israel, one of the, one of the 10 tribes, and not just one of the 10 tribes, but the lead tribe of the 10, the 10 tribes, the Northern Kingdom Israelites, okay? He's telling you, as you heard him before, say that he was going to cast off the, the northern kingdom Israelites, Israel. He's saying it again here. The brethren of, of Judah, I cast them out of my sight. The whole seed of Ephraim, meaning the entire northern kingdom. The entire northern 
kingdom. Where did they go? Did they just disappear out of the old book? There's no, why no mention of them in the New Testament? Where did they go? Did you ponder it? Did it dawn on you yet? Is this starting to make a little bit of sense now? Of who those Gentiles were? Of why, even though Yahweh Shai said, I don't care anything about you heathens, and I've come, I'm not come, but I'm not sitting, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Would it make sense for him to say that and then send his, his, his apostles and disciples to the Gentiles? Does that make sense? It would only make sense if those Gentiles were the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Come on, man. Please act like you can add. Verse 16, therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me. For I will not hear thee. He was so mad at them. He's like, I don't even want you to pray for them. Don't try to, don't try to ask me to have mercy on them. I don't want to hear any prayers on their, on their behalf. They messed up. Now they got to take their punishment. These were his children. These were his beloved. You think you're going to escape, Christian? I ask you again. He punished his own. The ones he loved. How do you think you're going to escape? Verse 17. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger idol worship of the highest order. Do they provoke me to anger, saith Yahweh? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, behold, my anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place. He promised to pour out his anger and his fury upon the place where his beloved children resided. And again, I ask you, I'm gonna keep asking you, Christian, do you think you're gonna escape? You think you're gonna get out of judgment and his children didn't get out of judgment? There was nothing they can do, nothing they can say to get themselves out of it. Once it was too late, he gave them a time to make it right once that deadline was passed, they had to get the judgment. There was nothing to be done after that. You, you guys have had plenty of an opportunity, plenty of chances to make things right with his people, to stop devouring, devouring his people. You could have done it. You could have tried to give them some reparations. You could have tried to give them some love. You could have quit stepping on their necks and treat them like they weren't shit. But you did not. All the way up until the very end, you kept the same energy. So his message to you, listen a lot, listen clearly. Keep the same energy now. I don't hear you. He doesn't hear you, Christian. Your prayers fall on deaf ears. Your expectations are in vain. Do you understand this? Oh, you go learn today. Back to the top of verse 20. Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, behold, my anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man and upon beast, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground. And it shall burn and shall not be quenched. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the power, the God, of Israel, put your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices and eat flesh. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in that day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. But this thing commanded I them, saying, obey my voice and I will be your power and ye shall be my people. 
and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart and went backward and not forward. Since the day that your fathers came out of the land of Egypt, unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets. See, when I told you about how he spoke to the people, daily rising, remember when he said, rising early, daily rising up early and sending them. This is how he communicates with the people. He speaks to his prophets and they go and speak to the people. Yet, and his prophets are always Israelites. So if you're going to the church, you go, you, your pastor is calling himself a prophet. You're calling, him, you're calling him a prophet and he's not an Israelite. You're an error. Admit it. And correct your ways. Therefore, thou shalt speak all these words unto them. So, see, look, I'm moving too fast. I got it highlighted and everything, and I'm still skipping it. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 26, a lot. Yet they hearken not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck, stiff-necked as Israel. They did worse than their fathers. Therefore, thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. See, the Most High knows. Listen, he's telling him to speak all these words that I'm going to tell you to them. They're not going to listen, but I want you to tell them these words anyway. What's important for you to gather out of this? That the Most High knows everything that's going to happen. He knew when he chose Israel that they were going to go and do all of the things that they did, that we did. He knew that we were going to do that. He knew it. He knew it. So or what, what, what does that mean to you? It means that this is supposed to help you understand that it was always understood by him. That things, this is how it's going to go. I have a plan for this, though. I'm going to allow them to go through their, their trials and tribulations. I'm going to let them make these mistakes. I'm going to chastise them. And then it's going to be a time when I'm going to bring their chastisement to an end. I'm going to save them. I'm going to send them a sacrifice to cleanse them so that I can recover them and bring them back to me. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. Why did he have to send his son as a sacrifice, Christians? What was the purpose? Because of the law of Moses. Even the Most High himself obeyed the law. He didn't put a law in place that he himself would disobey. No, according to the law. This is why you heard in the, the last video, right? When he said, shall a man put away his wife and she go and becomes another man's and, and he take her back? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? Roughly paraphrasing. This is what happened with his people. Remember, he considered both kingdoms, the northern and southern kingdom, his wives. He were betrothed to them, to us. He put away the northern kingdom. So he put away one of his wives. He couldn't take her back under the law. She was greatly polluted. He couldn't take the northern kingdom back because of the law that stood. The, the law of Moses stood in his way from being able to bring his children back, from being able to bring, bring his 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 betrothed back. So he had to do away with the law in order to recover that which he scattered. Hence, the sending of his son. He sent his son to go recover the scattered children of Israel, the northern kingdom. He sent him to go get them, to bring them back. And the wayward Judites that, I, that have begun, began to go off Okay, that's the reason why Yahweh who you've ignorantly called Jesus, as we continue to state, that's why he told you plainly, plainly, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He told you who he was sent for. He told you the reason for his coming. So how do you listen to him say it out of his own mouth? I've only come to recover Israel. And then you still include yourself. How do you do that? How do you justify that to yourself? No respect for the God you claim to love and serve so much. He told you out of his own mouth 
his own mouth with his own words. That's what it means when he, when, when, when he says something with his own mouth. It means he said it in his own words. You heard him say it. You read in red letter that he said it. And what do you say in return? Nah, 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 nah. He ain't really mean that he only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I know that's what he said, but let me tell you what he meant. Oh, wow. Oh, no, 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 no. See, see, Jesus, that's your interpretation. That's just your translation of your own words. Let me tell you what you meant to say. What kind of prideful, ignorantly prideful people does it take to think some shit like that, to use that sort of reasoning? That's fucking crazy. Fuck Jesus while we at it. One time for the one time, just to make that clear. Because, because I, I said the name, I, I just want to make sure y'all understand that energy over here you know, that, that we feel for your beloved, Jesus. No respect. No respect for the workers of your fucking imagination. That white man that you created from the Negro tribe. Fucking idiots. Anyway, continuing on, somebody needed that tongue lasher. Fuck you very much for listening. It's very much appreciated. <laughs> man, all right. So, um, Let's, let's get back to uh, verse 27. Therefore, thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. See, he knew better. He knew that they would not answer. He knew they wouldn't hearken. He knew this. It was not a surprise to him. He knows everything. He knew everything that we would ever do all throughout the course of history, but he chose us anyway. Never said he would throw us away. So it's not like he said in earlier chapters, okay, well, I love you and I'm going to save you guys later on. And then, and then later on came and it just got so bad that he was like pulling his hair out like, man, I can't believe that I chose these people. I changed my mind. I need a spiritual Israel now and I'm going to throw these people away because I never saw this coming. Amazing. He saw it all. He knew it all. And still his plan stood he made the plan knowing the future knowing how it all play out he made the plan ahead of time he told the end from the beginning he prophesied ahead of time what he would do what would come he knew he understood okay he didn't just discover down the road after he gave his word that he was going to do certain things he didn't discover um, some things that he didn't know before and then change his course. He didn't do that. And if you believe that's what he did, you can you imagine the, the disrespect that you have for him to believe that he had no idea what he was doing? Verse 28, but thou shalt say unto them, this is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of Yahweh, their power, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. Cut off thine hair, O Jerusalem, and cast it away and take up lamentation on high places. For the Lord Yahweh hath rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight saith Yahweh. They have set their abominations in the house which is called by my name to pollute it. And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not. Neither came it into my heart. They got into see, they got into all sorts of wickedness. You know, Israel was straight fucking up. Therefore, verse 32, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that it shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter, for they shall bury in Tophet till there be no place. This is what he did to his children. He's going to fuck you guys up, Gentiles. 
and the carcasses of this people shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth, and none shall fray them away. Then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem, the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom. Listen, see, the bridegroom, we know who the bridegroom is, right, Christians? You know who that is, right? This is the Old Testament. They already had the voice of the bridegroom. He was around already. See, he didn't just show up. You guys don't understand the scriptures. The voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. For the land shall be desolate. Continuing on to Jeremiah chapter eight. Subject, the sin and treachery of Judah. Verse one. At that time, saith Yahweh, they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Judah and the bones of his princes and the bones of the priests and the bones of the prophets and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves. And they shall spread them before the sun and the moon and all the host of heaven, whom they have loved and whom they have served and after whom they have walked and whom they have sought and whom they have worshiped. They shall not be gathered nor be buried. They shall be for dung upon the face of the earth. See, the Most High knew that the people would go into all of the bullshit idolatry that they went into, worshiping the sun and the moon and the stars and the trees and the animals and you know the the you know the so-called planets and everything else. This is something he saw coming on the horizon already. They were already doing some of this shit, and he already and he saw all the other stuff that they were going to add to the sin. They were going to add sin on top of sin. He saw it all. He knew it all. He knew it all. Nothing was hid from him. Nothing was hidden. None of it was a surprise. And death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family, which remain in all the places where the have driven them, saith Yahweh of hosts. Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, thus saith Yahweh, shall they fall and not arise? Shall he turn away and not return? You hear, what, you hear this? You hear what he's saying? You hear, you hear what this is saying? He's telling you everything they're going to do, all the wickedness, all the idolatry, everything they're going to do. You listening? Then he says, moreover, thou shalt say unto them, after he just finished talking about everything they're going to do, thus saith Yahweh, shall they fall, they who? My people. And not arise? Why is he asking this question? Because he's saying that they will. He's saying, you, get, you, think, you think that I'm going to let them fall and not raise them up? He's always, this is always his plan. This is his story playing out. The fall and redemption of his people. That's what the entire book is about. The fall and the rise and redemption of the Israelites. The entire book. The entire book, not just, not, not the Old Testament, the entire book book shall they fall and not arise shall he turn away and not return and then is this people of jerusalem i'm sorry why then is this people of jerusalem slitten back by a perpetual black backsliding they hold fast deceit they refuse to return i hearkened and heard but they spake not aright no man repented him of his wickedness saying, what have I done? Everyone turned to his course as the horse rusheth into the battle. Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of Yahweh. How do you say we are wise and the law of the Lord Yahweh is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. See, he's talking about the law of Moses. He's telling me that he made the law of Moses in vain. The pen of the scribes that, that, that wrote down the law was in vain. What does that mean? He's already telling you, I'm going to do away with the law. It was in vain. I'm going to do away with it. I have something better coming. It's something better was his son. Continue on. Verse 9. 
The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. No, they have rejected the word of the Lord Yahweh and what wisdom is in them. Therefore will I give their wives unto others and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For everyone from the least, even unto the greatest, is given to covetousness. From the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Listen, the Most High hates when people lie. He hates when the priests and the shepherds and the people who preach it and are supposed to be shepherds of the flock, when they tell false understandings, when they tell false prophecies, when they say to the people, hey, everything's all good. The, the, the Lord, he's happy. It's, we got peace. We're going to have peace. Everything is going to be cool. Don't even trip. He, he got it. Don't, don't even trip. Like You're going to be good. All you got to do is just send me those tithes and that pink Cadillac will be waiting. All you got to do is send me those tithes and that brand new horse boy with, the, with those 24-inch, you know what I'm saying, uh, 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 horseshoes is going to be waiting for you in the stall. They say they 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 come and tell people all the bullshit they want to hear. This shit ain't brand new. What's going on in the Christian church right now? This went on way back then. Nothing new under the sun. Nothing at all. He hates it. He hates that you guys in the Christian church are being told by your pastors that you guys have salvation. He hates it. He hates it. Verse 12, were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore, shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation, they shall be cast down, says Yahweh, in the time of their visitation. That means a regeneration. Neither could they blush, because they dark as a motherfucker. Dark, you can't see dark people blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation, meaning when they return, when they die and return to the earth, they shall be cast down, says Yahweh. Cast down, meaning put in poverty, put in the ghettos, put on welfare. That's what he meant by in the time of their visitation, they shall be cast down. I will surely consume them, saith Yahweh. There shall be no grapes on the vine, nor figs on the fig tree, and the leaf shall fade, and the things that I have given them shall pass away from them. Why do we sit still? Assemble yourselves and let us enter into the defense cities, and let us be silent there. For Yahweh, our power, have put us to silence and given us water of gall to drink, because we have sinned against Yahweh. We looked for peace, but no good came, and for a time of health, and behold, trouble. The snorting of his horses was heard from Dan. It's one of the tribes of Israel, one of the northern kingdom tribes. The snorting of his horses was heard from Dan. The whole land trembled at the sound of the neighing of his strong ones, for they are come, and have devoured the land, and all that is in it, the city, and those that dwell therein. They're talking about when the Most High sent the other nations upon them. Because that's what the Most High does when he wants to take down a people. He raises up another nation, makes them mightier than the other nation, and, and, and he fights for them. He fights for them. He guarantees them the victory. And this is what the Most High has always done. If, see, you guys err not knowing the scriptures. You don't understand his habits. The Most High has always brought with it whenever... The Israelites got in trouble. He would raise up a nation against them and then bring them down. And then what does he do? That same nation that he rose up against his people, he'll take them down. He'll punish them for everything that they did to his people. Even though he sent them against his people, still, you still touch my people. I don't care if I sent you. <laughs> I'm still going to kill you. I'm still going to judge you for it because these people were only created as vessels of wrath. 
This was their entire purpose. This was their entire purpose. He didn't care for them. They were just weapons to be used for correction. That's it. That's it. This is what he's always done. So guess what, Christians? This kingdom that you've enjoyed, your position up high, it's over. I know you're looking around right now and you're in fear. You're scared because you can feel it in your bones. You can feel it in your spirit. I'm just here to let you know that you're right. Yeah, you're right. The end is near. Everything that you've known, it's over. It's never going to return to your normal. It's never going to be what you once loved and, and held so dear to you. Never going to come back. We are in the phase where the Most High is about to bring you down. It was bringing his place down. And he's going he's gonna to lift up a, a more powerful nation to bring down the most powerful nation that there is. And that nation is going to be the nation of Israel. That's going to be his people. That's going to be his people. The people who you stomped on and crushed and put your yoke of iron on and subdued. That people. That people is going to get turned into gods, be given powers like unto the most high. And they're going to be turned loose on you. We are going to be turned loose on you. And we're going to take the entire earth captive. Those that we don't kill, we're going to take you captive. This is his promise. This is his promise. He, he said it's going to be the most amazing thing anyone has ever seen. What he does at the end of his movie. The climax of this movie is going to be a doozy. Oh, boy. Verse 17, for behold, I will send serpents, cockatrices among you, which will not be charmed, and they shall bite you, saith Yahweh. When I would comfort myself against sorrow, my heart is faint in me. Behold the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people, because of them that dwell in a far country. Is not the Lord Yahweh in Zion? Like, where is he? Is he, is he still with us? Is not her king in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images? Hmm? The most I was asking, like, am I not still, aren't I still here? They're acting like I'm gone or something. Why are they provoking me to anger? Like I'm not even here. What are y'all doing? Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and with their strange vanities? The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved for the hurt of the daughter of my people. Am I hurt? I am black. Astonishment have taken hold on me. What did he say? I am black. I didn't just read that. That ain't that ain't even really there. My bad, y'all. Y'all know that's just my evil, you know what I'm saying? Uh black Hebrew Israelite brain that's just seeing stuff there that's not really there. I am black. Astonishment have taken hold on me. No, and then see Christians are out there. No, 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 see, he's not really black. See, that's just a metaphor. And you know, and see, astonishment took hold of him. So he's black with astonishment. Huh? You can show me a white person that can turn black with astonishment. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> that must be a neat trick. Show me. I need to see it. Please. Wherever this person is that you can pre present as an example for me to see, show me, and I might believe it. Black? Black? See, I bet this, is, I bet this has been taken out in the other versions of the Bible. That's the reason why they came up with so many translations. Black. Huh? You mean to tell me the people of the book are black? Hmm? Huh? So-called? So-called, see the air quotes, so-called black. What if, what if, see, because we know the devil, we know the devil turns everything on the most high upside down. Have anybody ever considered this? That black is actually brown and that the, the devil just changed what black was, made black something different than what it actually was. Anybody ever think about that? Because we're not actually black, but these people call us black, right? Right, 
but but actually, you know, right here, and when you read, if you read this in Hebrew, it wouldn't say black, it would say dark. It was like, I am, I am dark. Right. All right. So let's let's linger here on this on this concept of of black, though. All right. Let's just run with black for the sake of argument. Let's linger here just for a second. Black. Could the people of the book be black? Is this is this a one off? Is this a mistake? Am I taking this out of context? Is it pop? Could there possibly be any place else in the Bible where the people of the book, the Israelites might be described as black. I mean, we know that the Israelites had to look something like the Egyptians and the Ethiopians, Ethiopians being black, right? So-called dark, right? Right. But still somehow, you know, you got still a reason that um, even though they looked like that, that, that somehow the Israelites are actually white, even though they're supposed to look like the Ethiopians and, and the Egyptians, but whatever, 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 right? Let, let's not, let's not use logic in, in, in our brains here, right? Let's just believe what the white man told us, right? That's what we're supposed to do, right? Nah, that ain't, that ain't what we're doing. We did that long enough. That's how we don't do that anymore. We don't do that anymore. We don't, we don't elevate and exalt the opinions of dogs. We don't do that. Not kings, we don't do that. Not princes, not rulers, but we don't do that, all right? We study in truth and sincerity the most high's word. Let's take a trip. Let's go backwards in time a little bit. Let's go to Job. 30, 30. What does Job say? My skin is black upon me and my bones are burned with heat. Here go the Christians. They're about to say something stupid again. I can hear them. See, he, he, his skin was black because he, he was in the heat. He was in the sun for too long. See, he told you my bones are burned with heat. So... Christians are going to try to tell the rest of us class that white people, when they stay in the sun, they turn black. <laughs> oh, man. That's fucking crazy, man. Are you guys serious? He told you plainly, my skin is black upon me and my bones are burned with heat. My skin is black upon me. Please, please save the bullshit for your children. We are not your children, white folks. You can't just tell us anything like these are the days where we can't read and write and understand English. Like we can't read the, the stuff for ourselves and, and see what's here. You just can't tell us anything anymore. You can't do it. One more time for the slow people in the back. My skin is black upon me and my bones are burned with heat. Wow. So Job says that, that he's black and Jeremiah says that he's black. Let's take a trip. The Songs of Solomon. Let's get chapter one, verse five. Now, this is, this is one of King Solomon's ladies. All right, she's speaking right now. All right, Let, let's see what she says. All right, verse five. I am black, but comely. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Okay, this is, I know what you're saying. But see, that's not King Solomon. That's, that's, that's his, his, his lady friend, as you guys would like to say. That's his lady friend. Okay. All right, so no, it, it wasn't a black woman with a black man. He wasn't a black man who, who had a black lady friend. It was, you know, he was a white man that had a black lady friend, right? Okay, let's let's just say you're right for, for the moment, all right? Let's, let's just pretend, okay? I am black but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon, all right? Next one, look not upon me because I am black, because the sun hath looked upon me, because only melanated people get darker in the sun, right? White folks, not melanated people, they don't get dark. They get burned. You get burned. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards. 
but my own vineyard have I not kept. All right. So he's saying that's his lady friend. And what is she? Shulamite. All right. Let's, let's get that. Most scholars agree that the term Shulamite indicates that she was a person from Shulam, which they believe to be synonymous with Shunem, a small town in Northern Israel. Okay. 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 We don't need to go back and forth with that, do we? Okay. We, we understand that the Israelites by now, you got to understand the Israelites and so-called Negroes. But we're, we're going to keep bringing this out. We're not just going to assume that I'm right here. We're going to keep looking at the book, all right, and see what it says, all right? We're going to stay in Songs of Solomon. Let's go to chapter five. Chapter five, verse 11. What does it say? Well, let's start with, yeah, let's, let's start with uh, verse 10. My beloved is white and ruddy. The chief is among 10,000. Now, what does it mean? He is white and ruddy. What does that mean? Hmm? What does that mean? Now, ruddy is a, is a, is a color, right? White is a, it's not a color. It's, it means devoid of color, actually, right? What does it mean? Is it person? Is this? Is he? Is she saying that he's two colors at the same time? Hmm. Is that what this means? We're, we're going to find out. We're going to keep digging. Okay. Let's get verse eleven first. His head is as the most fine gold. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. Hmm. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. Hmm. Let's Google bushy locks. I mean, we all know, like we can, we can just, we could save all this and just apply common sense, which people that you can see in the earth right now wear locks. Mm -hmm. Locks is a hairstyle. Okay. Which people? Some they call them dreadlocks today. But they're just called locks. Bushy locks. So it should be over at that, right? Look, you see this? You see that? Mm -hmm. You see the people? You see the hair? You see this? You see the people? You see the hair? So Solomon was a man with locks. His hair, bushy locks, bushy locks, bushy locks. Look at the Negroes. Look at the bushy locks. Look at the locks. These are locks, you guys. This is what Solomon's hair would have looked like. It would be in one of these type of styles. Okay? Okay? Bushy locks. Okay? All right. We're going to come back to that white and ruddy. Because the white is not referring to a skin color. The white is referring to his status. It was a, a symbol of purity. This was a way of her saying, my beloved is pure and ruddy. I'm not just going to say that and, and force you to believe it. We're going to dig on that. We're going to bring it out. Okay. We are going to, we're going to get to this and make sure that we are edifying that we're, I'm not just saying stuff and saying, you got to believe me. We're going to, 
we're going to bring it out. Okay. So for now, we're going to get out of here just for a second. Don't worry. We're going to come back. All right. We're going to come back. Trust me. Numbers chapter six, verse five. All the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head. This is a story about none other than, come on, strong man of the Nazarites. Come on, Christians. Who was the strong man of the Nazarites? Hmm? Who had the Dillons with, with Delilah? Samson. Samson was an Israelite, right? Right, everybody? We all got that? Right. Samson was an Israelite of the Nazarenes. All the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head until the days be fulfilled in the which he separated himself unto the Lord Yahweh. He shall be holy and he shall set, he shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. Samson, the Israelite man, he wore locks as well. Solomon wore locks. Samson wore locks. Two Israelite men with locks for a hairstyle. Come on, we know that's a Negro hairstyle. Don't play fucking, fucking stupid. But we're going to keep going. Judges. Chapter 16. Verse 13. Delilah said unto Samson, hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, if thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web. Hmm? Hmm? The seven locks of his head. Again, what does that sound like? You can count the number of locks. So you know it's not talking like a lock of hair, like, like long hair, just they, they just go call a clump of hair a lock. No. That, that's your Gentiles twist on, on words. Lock. Samson had them. Right? Seven of them. And she fastened it with a pen. She fastened it with a pen. Fastened it with a pen? Like, which pen? Okay, uh, never mind. I was going to ask you people that, but you, you heathens probably, ain't, you, you guys aren't going to know that. <laughs> so I'm not even going to ask you guys a question about, about uh, black beauty tips and, and shit of, of the Negroes. I'm not going to ask you that. So we're just going to skip that. It's a dumb question for you people. All right, verse 19. And she made him sleep upon her knees and she called for a man and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head and she began to afflict him and his strength went from him. She shaved off the seven locks of his head. The locks, the, the, the locks, locks. See, you can count his locks and count the locks, individual count locks. You can separate them and count locks. You, you can separate, count the locks, separate, you can count locks, you can count individual locks, count individual locks, right? He had seven. Lock. He had seven. Okay. Okay. Let's go back to Song of Solomon, chapter four. Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair. Thou hast dove's eyes within thy locks. Thy hair is as a flock of goats. Look, 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 look white folks is climbing over. So, see, see, white folks can have hair like goats. You know, we are here gets curly and, and nappy and kinky like goats. Oh, okay. Behold, but see, see, he was fair. That means he's white. See, they love to do this. They love to play word games like this. They love to lead you to believe that the term fair means white, but it doesn't. It doesn't. Let's, let's look it up. Let's look it up. Fair. 
fair, beautiful, or handsome. Say that again. Beautiful, handsome, beautiful, beauty, comely, goodly, pleasant, all right? Has nothing to do with skin color, okay? So you guys are dead in the water on that one, all right? Verse three, thy lips are like a thread of scarlet and thy speech is comely. Thy temples are like a piece of pomegranate within thy locks. Within thy locks. Chapter five, verse two. I sleep, but my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh, saying, open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled. For my head is filled with dew, and my locks with the drops of the night. Again, locks. Locks. Consistently saying the same thing. Locks. Chapter 6, verse 7. As a piece of pomegranate are thy temples within thy locks. Again. Locks, again, for the class, locks, right? All right, let's get Isaiah, let's go back to Isaiah. We're gonna get Isaiah 47, Isaiah chapter 47. Oh, I must have spelled something wrong, oh yeah, okay. Helps when you spell things correctly. Isaiah chapter 47, verse two. Take the millstones and grind meal. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover the thigh. Pass over the rivers. This is talking to the Israelites who wear locks. The Israelites wear locks. Again, you're saying it again. The Israelites wear locks. It is a hairstyle. Locks. Okay. Not, not signifying a, 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 cup, a clump of hair. Stop it. Let's get Ezekiel 44, 20. Neither shall they shave their heads nor suffer their locks to grow long. Their locks to grow long. You can tell this is talking about a style of hair and not referencing a clump of hair. Correct? Correct. Let's go back to Jeremiah 8, 21. For the hurt of the daughter of my people and my hurt I am black. Astonishment have taken hold of me. That's where we that's, that's where we started the journey, right? I just want to bring it back because we just came from Isaiah. We heard the Israelites been talking about being black there. Jeremiah also, an Israelite prophet, says that he is black. Samson, an Israelite, his woman is black. He is described as a man with locks and he's ruddy. He's ready in color and he wears box. Job was black as well. I understand Jeremiah. We're gonna jump ahead briefly to Jeremiah chapter 14. And we're gonna get verse two. Judah mourneth and the gates thereof languish who, 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 who mourneth? Judah, the Jews, right? And the gates thereof, language. What are the gates? Their communities, their borders, their gates. They, who are they? The Jews, the Judites. They are black unto the ground. What does that mean? Another pronunciation? Again, in, 
in the other version of Hebrew, they will say that they're dark unto the ground, meaning they are dark like the ground. They are dark like the like the dark dirt, like the dirt. Not white people. You see white dirt? No, you see brown. Different shades of brown, right? But the black means is signifying how black? Dark, like dark dirt, dark ground. Okay? Let's get a little Lamentations. Chapter five. Verse 10, our skin, who's our, the Israelites, our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. Like, okay, here you go, Christians. I can hear you already. See, it's, it's, the, the, skin, the skin was black because, because they were hungry. So white folks can get black when they get hungry. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense to a fucking idiot. Our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. Dark people can get darker. White folks do not get dark. They get burned. You might be able to get a little tan, but you don't get black. Stop the fucking lying pathological lion madness right damn now. Stop it right now. Because if you're going to tell me that non-melanated people can turn black from starvation, I'm going to slap you and your mama as soon as I'm done with this video. You and your mama. Tell her to get ready. What did the five fingers say to the face? <laughs> I'm going to be up in your motherfucking mama's bedroom slapping the dog shit on her stupid ass for raising a fucking dumbass like you that would actually believe some shit and think that I'm dumb enough to believe some shit and disrespect me by fixing your fucking lips to tell me some shit like that. Damn. Like, for real. Stop it right fucking now. All right. This, this video has gotten about to that, uh, that time I, I like to stop the video. So I'm going to cut it right here. And we're going to pick up from where I'm leaving off. I'm going to be on the same subject matter. We're going to be keeping it going in the next installment. All right. So just know it's a continuation. We're keeping it moving. This ain't, this ain't nothing but a pause in the action. All right. I pray that you guys were edified. We are not done. We are far from done. We are going to pulverize this dead horse. Y'all dig me? All right. I appreciate your time today. Everybody out there listening. I pray that you guys were edified, increased in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding today. Let's give all praise, honor, and glory to our Father, Yahweh, blessed and glorious be thy name. We pray in the name of our beloved Lord, Savior, and Master, Yahweh Shai. All praises due grace, peace, and many blessings and salutations to my family, the elect of Israel. You guys sit tight, walk in your liberty. I'll see you guys on the next one. All right? Shalom.